Oh, no, it obviously would have shown us if anything else was happening. So, yeah, we're keeping Callisto. Okay. So, yes, we're going to go ahead and kill this and appropriately add something one hour out. Jupiter. All right, and that's more correct things. Um, so, yep, that's awesome. Now we have to finish our... Mercury probe. And it appears this... <sighs> well... Um... Alright, so it looks like some bit of that episode died, but the quick summary is that we did end up correcting things for that Jupiter approach such that we'll get a Callisto encounter on the way in. Uh, we're going to enter the, the Jovian Sphere of Influence in 100 days for that, and 26 days for the earlier thing. Um, so, yes. That's, that's awesome. Now, we have to worry about Owl 7. The famed Owl 7. Uh, how's the tech doing? Refined rocketry in 64 days. So, here's the question. Do we start... Well, no, actually we have... Uh, we have 33 days, so... 33 days until we get refined rocketry. No, th sorry, 33 days until uh, one of our VAB slots is empty, at which point we will have to commit to construction in order to make our Mercury window, I think. Um, we can start construction and then upgrade partway in, I think. That will be okay. Uh, but for now, we have enough queued up that we'll be okay. So let's go ahead and ride Dove 3 into Jupiter. That was super lucky that we actually, just by changing our inclination slightly, we immediately got a Callisto encounter. That was that was fairly lucky, but that's why I had those planes aligned so that we had the maximum chance of that happening. All right, so here's Dove 3. And we are, let's see, let's focus on Jupiter again. On Io. Why is Io targeted? Let's target Jupiter. Ah, uh, so we're coming in from there. How aligned is that with the, these orbits? It's not unaligned. It's not perfectly aligned, but it will do. Um, so we're going to try a little because now I'm getting cocky. I'm getting a little bit cocky. I want to try to align it better and we'll see what happens here. That's too high. I think. No, that's actually about right. How high above, whoops, how high above Europa's orbit is that going to be? Uh, so we want to move this back out. I think we want to move this down a little bit. And now we want to create a maneuver node on it. Hmm. 
That maneuver node has now disappeared, which is funky. <laughs> okay. Let's remove all nodes and try again. Create a node here. 24 hours. Move it back. All right. Now, raise that up. Needs to raise a little bit more. Too bad there. All right, now let's create a node on it. And let's guesstimate what it's... It needs to be somewhat higher, it looks like. So we delete this node move another meter per second higher, place this, wrong thing, what the heck, okay. So now we need to go one hour increments. Nope, that's one second. One hour. Bring it back out. How high is that above... Whoops. No, that's Callisto. We wanted it... We want it about in here. How aligned is that? That's still low. How aligned is it with Europa? Let's move it in a bit more. And it's... Still a bit low. Okay, so we'll kill that. Now we'll move that one more meter per second. This is incredibly tedious, but it is at least doing what we want it to, I think. Okay, that looks like it will actually be the correct orbital altitude. Um, Sorry. The... Go in 30 minute chunks. It is now at the orbital altitude of Ganymede. And how is it placed? It's still a bit under. So, remove this and make it even higher. We went up a bunch of meters per second this time. Note 2. Bring this in. How is that looking? That's looking good. That looks correct for... for Ganymede, but it's not going to give us any kind of closest approach indicators, which is obnoxious. Um, The other question is, what does that do to... All right, so then we leave at a very... <laughs> we leave quite southerly. Um, so, is it worth doing that to trade? Whether we can hit anybody coming in, or do we want to try to hit something going out? Um, hmm. I feel like we can probably do a correction there. What's that, sort, that thing's orbital speed? Oh, its velocity is 10 kilometers per second. So we'll be going... I don't know. We'll be going something like 10 kilometers per second, so who knows how much of an inclination change we could actually make there. Um, but let's actually, right, we can, 
what am I saying? We can find out how much of an inclination change we could make here. Um, because we want to correct that green ejection vector. And bring it right up in line with everything else. Yes, yeah, something like that. Oops, wrong way. Is that right? That looks about right. How much does that cost? 562 meters per second. That is not something we can expend. That is that is not within the capabilities of this probe. Um, so we would actually have to... So what's going on here? We would actually probably need to increase... We probably need to do rather more than that early and then do another correction later. So let's try something like that. And then perform a second correction about here when I think it enters the equatorial plane of these things. Um, What's going on here? Ah, that's what's going on here. Are these lining up approximately correctly? That's still high. Why is that not actually lowering it any? That makes no sense. We're burning anti-normal, and yet it's increasing that. All right, that's exceptionally expensive. I think that's right about the limit of the delta V we have, but it does provide... That's fairly good, actually. Oops. No, we want to bring it down more. That's right about lined up. All right, so coming in, what does this look like? Coming in, we're also fairly well lined up. Not exceptionally so, but fairly well. So, hmm. Now, time to calculate just how much delta V we have. How much delta V do we have? We have. Ah, uh, so the RCS thrusters have a specific impulse of 295.1. We are at 0.36 tons. Now, I think that 27.2 liters of combined MMH and NTO is approximately 30 kilograms. Maybe 32. Let's highball it. Let's say 360 over 325. Natural log times 8.0665 times 295.1. 295 meters per second delta V. That's the high estimate. Um, let's try the low estimate. 
we I, I know that that mixture is not going to be less than one ki kilogram per liter total. So, uh, what did I say that was? That's 27. So 360 over 333. Take the natural log times 9.80665 times 295.1. 225. All right, so we should have enough delta V to perform this series of maneuvers. 32 meters per second and 186 meters per second. Oh, that's actually, no, that's tighter than I thought. Um, right. Dare we risk it? All right, what happens if we don't have any maneuvers? We come in. All right. So let's try only fixing our ejection vector. <sighs> this is this is tiresome because we don't have the data we need to do this right. Oh, that's... no, that was the wrong way. That looks correct to me, broadly speaking. Let's put a note on it to check. Is that right? That's right. All right, let's put a node on one of the inner orbits to check. Is that, that is in fact in the plane. All right, and that is a cheap maneuver of merely four meters per second. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna say the heck with our entrance. Um, so, Yeah, likely we just won't get any actual. <sighs> likely we just won't get any. Um... We won't get any encounters with this one, which is acceptable. You know, I'm not unwilling to accept that result, to be clear. Because we do at least have one encounter with the other thing. lined up so let's go ahead and warp to next maneuver when we'll perform this okay focused on Jupiter should be about a five or six second maneuver. Four, three. Okay. Okay. How does this look? That looks quite perfectly lined up to me. 
All right, so that was a successful plane change. Um, and the question is, can we get, can we? Yeah, we'll have to, I guess we'll have to wait until we're in the SOI so that things don't get funny. Now, maybe patch conic, increasing patch conic limits would help, but I, I think, I think it's some kind of KSP weirdness. So let's go ahead and that's in 26 days and we already decided that we don't actually have to do anything yet. So right, let's let's transit this SOI. I'm going to save the game. Oops. Jupiter. Uh Okay. And warpity warpity warp. We're going to warp on through. Okay, we are now in Jupiter's sphere of influence and we're already doing 12 kilometers per second despite being way out there. I don't even want to think about how fast we'll be going at periapsis. So. We're targeting Io. Why won't it give me A and then DN for Io? I guess that's supposed to, uh, that's the AN, but it doesn't give me a actual number. Relative inclination. Europa, Ganymede, Callisto. Literally none of that tells me anything more than what we already knew. So that's tragic. Um, we're unlikely to hit anybody coming in because we're quite low. So we don't actually have to the only other thing we could... Well, what if we... Let's do something funky here. Let's... That does nothing. That also does a fat lot of nothing. It looks like... Yeah, we can change our, our peerage of, but it isn't actually giving us any kind of encounter. So yeah, as I said back at the start of this whole rigmarole, it would be great if you could just force KSP to tell you where a body is going to be at a given point in time. For example, we're... We're already falling by close up. Let's try getting me. So we're going to be... Uh, remove all nodes. We're going to be at its altitude in 44 days and 50 minutes. Um, well, I guess there's no particular reason I can't just math this. Does it tell me anything useful here? Um, no, it doesn't tell, it doesn't mention the orbital period. That's annoying. It says what the rotational period is, but it doesn't say what the orbital period is. Uh, so, to the Wikipedias. Um, what is the orbital period of Ganymede? Let's find out. Orbital characteristics, orbital period. 7.154 days. The first one is in 43.25 days. So it will be fairly close. Whoops, oh, no, wrong one. Yeah, 43, 43 days. 43 over 
7.154. That is six orbits. So it will basically be right here when we hit there. Now let's check this. That's... It will basically still be right there. All right, so that's foiled. Now let's look at Europa. What is Europa's period? 3.55 days. So... Target Europa, 43.25 over 3.55. So it will be 12.18 orbital periods. So 0.18 times 360 is 60 degrees. So it will be... here. It will be here when we're here, so we'll miss it. Now let's check the other option. 43 days and 19 hours, which is uh, 3 quarters, a little over 3 quarters, 0.78 over 3.551. 12.32. Alright, so it will be here when we're here we're still going to miss it. All right, so I think that... Um, our last gasp is Io. We're going to hit Io 43 days, 43 point... What is that? 3.6, roughly? What is 9 hours over 24? 3.75. 43.375 over its orbital period is 1.77 days. Twenty-four and a half rotations. So it will be here when we're there. And when we're over here. Twenty-four and three quarters. So it will be. That's a half. So it's going to be right here when we fly by. So that. Yeah, we we're almost going to make it to Io. And if this were real life, we could get some fairly decent photography of Io as we fly by. But as this is KSP. We are not going to enter Io's sphere of influence, and therefore, you know, we're not actually going to gain anything from that proximity. Uh, but let's see if there's anything we can do that might get us close. So we want to increase time to periapsis. So let's go ahead and... No, that's we don't want to do that. Let's try radial. Yes, this might actually work. Why won't it actually give me closest approach markers for IO? We are going to be approaching IO fairly closely, aren't we not? Assuming my math is correct. Erg. Is this above or below Io's orbit? Lost it. Apparently, you, you, there's still a bug where you can't actually move maneuver nodes. 
at times. All right, so we are moving radial outwards. All right, so what to do? Well, that's incredibly annoying. It's not giving us the close approach things no matter what we're doing. And I'm fairly sure that that's aligned with the plane. Yes, it is. It's Yeah. I don't get it. Is that is that going up or down? How can we even All right, that's going up. Pretty sure that's now exactly aligned with IO. And yet we're still not getting any kind of close approach markers. Now, Bill is working. Taneva is working on the orbit targeter, so hopefully in 1.2 it will work better. But for now, it's... Alright, I feel like this is like a solved problem in orbital mechanics, and therefore it's really annoying that it's not doing what it should. So, let me go ahead and... I'm just going to save it now. And you know what? We're just going to we're just going to swing by and then I'm going to load the save because that seems to be the only way that I can actually get any kind of data on where IO will be here. Which is in one sense cheating, but on the other hand, um, it won't actually give me any data, <laughs> so I feel rather justified. Yep, so there's Io. So I was actually right in my predictions. Of where I will be and if we can just get this thing also it's not showing the AN and DN nodes which is worrying <laughs> which is frankly rather worrying okay we focused on Jupiter IO is targeted on set target set target so we want to create change periapsis to one four kilometers in five minutes. This is just so we get a maneuver node here. And 
Memory served, I was about here, wasn't it? I think so. Um, yeah, the advantage of if we are essentially um, in the plane of these moons, so we're hitting them all once, twice, minor adjustments will be enough for us to get these encounters. So... Where is the maneuver node? Ah, it's down here. Whoa, that was weird. It didn't show up, the, the crosshairs didn't show up for a minute, and now they're showing up. That was super weird. Alright. We will adjust on out. How are we doing on propellant loading? We're merely sipping. Okay, so we will not have a very close flyby of Jupiter, but that is acceptable to me, in exchange for getting a whole nother moon. Um, as long as our other probe does make a close flyby of Jupiter within 20,000 kilometers, although I think I need to change those contract limits, um, and I was thinking of changing them to like 50,000 kilometers or even 100,000 given the the issues of uh, astrodynamics at this range. I think that seems only fair. Um, Alright, so that's that. Now, why will it not engage Orbit Targeter on me? Looks like we're a bit... I think probably what's confusing KSP is that we are coming in retrograde. So the inclination is 180 degrees off. So I think that's probably part of what's going on. But let's see what happens here. Okay, why is that not giving us an IO encounter? I'm fairly sure that's actually where IO is, or is going to be at that period of time. So I guess we'll quick save and do another warp and see what's going on. Okay, so we want to be slightly further out, it looks like. It's weird that I'm basically having to do this by hand instead of letting KSP give any kind of counter info. I mean, really what I probably should have done, well, what I should have done was, was tell Trajectory Optimization Tool to do it. Um, but I don't know how to do that. Uh, so we want to be even further out. Um, focus on IO. Alright, and so now we need to move this bit further out, I think to right about there. And let's try one, one more time.
Okay, so what's going on here? Well, we're a bit high, and we have not... How much of a rotation is that? Not much. So we've almost got our encounter, and we are a bit high. Focused on IO. Okay, now we're aligned. So we need to burn about like this, I think. kind of stop moving for a minute. Okay, and lastly we want to move this down a little bit. Okay. Now let's see where we are. We had 90.54. Apologies for the flicker. Okay, so that... Looks like now we're a bit in front, so let's try something like 88. Yeah, we passed... bit in front and our inclination was 155.335. Okay, so we're going to line up such that we can change our inclination. Okay, so we were going to try about 85, I think, and we wanted 155.335. That's close enough. Let's focus on Jupiter and see how we are. Okay, are we above or below? I guess this is just that Io has a very tiny gravity well. So this looks like we're pretty much correct in terms of plane, but we are still going to pass, maybe we'll pass right on, let's find out. So we're at 155.26.
And so 83 is a bit much. We'll try 80 next time. Okay, that's that's pretty darn close, and yet we're still not getting an encounter. All right, so we're actually passing behind it. So we'll have to try something like 88. Just for the sake of argument, I want to see what would happen. Come on. Highlight. There we are. If we have a radical... See if it'll even give us any kind of close encounter markers. This is like probably 20 kilometers per second of delta V that we're just doing right here. Yep, 20 kilometers per second. Uh, no. It won't let us add that much. So, 155.26 was fine but we want something like 85. Thanks to Kerbal Alarm Clocks actually having alarms at the AN and DN, we should be able to see, and we want to place them roughly over. A4, A5. Let's try 87. And focus on IO. focus on Jupiter, and, oops, no, wrong thing, that's right, all right, so we'll put the A in, whoa, right there. Alright, so that's 155.36. So, assuming we nail this part of it, we are at 86.72. Let's warp to here. How are we not getting an encounter with Aya? That boggles my mind. How is that even possible? Ah, because we're trailing behind it by quite a bit. And because the... All right, so I guess it really just has a remarkably tiny sphere. Of, oh, right, of course it has a tiny sphere of influence because Jupiter's right there, and Jupiter has the mass of gravity well, and we're doing 27.3 kilometers per second. All right, so we want to be even further forward. I think 89. That's a... That's a really impressively tiny sphere of influence. We certainly did not luck out as to which one of these things we were getting an encounter with. But then Io is by far the easiest to get an encounter with. Because its period is so short that we can carefully optimize how we're going to come in. And then... We will line up. Alright, 
so we want to actually go up a little bit more. What did we say, 88 this time? No, 89. I think we'll go with 89. Oops, 89. All right, now let's fix our A N and D N such that they actually match. Focus on Jupiter. All right, so the All right, 88.4, we'll, we'll roll that, and looks like the, <sighs> that's correct. It's still not giving us an encounter, which means we're probably still not hitting its sphere of influence. Yep, we're still gonna pass behind it. And, Wow, look at how close we are, and we're not actually getting an encounter. That's quite remarkable. So like, how far away? Oh, it won't tell us how far away it is. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's probably only like, maybe five or 6,000 kilometers from Io. That's ridiculous. And we're still not in its sphere of influence. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um Okay. So, I guess we'll try an even 90 this time. And align the Oops. That was too far off radial. So now we need to correct where the A and the N are. Okay. Let's try this. Okay, this is going to be very close, as close approaches go. But it still doesn't think we have an encounter. because we're passing, I guess, slightly astern of it. All right, that's ridiculous. Look at how close we are. Look, look, that's... So, Io... Equatorial radius, 1811 kilometers. All right, so... We are... That's 1811, so 2,000 kilometers, roughly. 2,000... So that's 4,000, 6,000, 
8,000. All right, so we're about 20,000 kilometers from Io. And does it say what the SOI? Oh, it does. Okay, the SOI is 7841 kilometers. Now, I think that's from the center, which means in effect it's actually 5,000 kilometers for an SOI. That's amazingly tiny. That's like Phobos and Deimos level tiny, almost. Um, that's, that's faintly shocking. Okay, one more. All right, so that puts the A in where it should be. And what is that actually? Is that the A in or the DN? I don't even know. DN, okay. Um, and We also need to have an even wider By rights, that should actually be an encounter, but then all of these things should have been an encounter. Yeah, we're just not getting... KSP is just not actually showing us the close approach or anything. Ninety was close. Let's try ninety five. Well, ninety five point six. Now it's showing us the ascending and descending notes. Now it shows us an encounter. It didn't show us an encounter back there. Very odd. But I'll take it. And because we're not actually going to get any kind of... Um, so I was going to be there at Encounter. So what's going on here? So we're still passing behind it, so we still want to do a little bit better. 90... Eight. All right. So we're going to try 98 now. Oh, and also, I should probably actually transmit all the science now that we're here. And let's get a, a biosample. All right, that's a crap ton of science, is it not? Yes, it is. Temperature, telemetry, micro, gravity scan. Atmosphere. All right, we're over the great red spot. Um, what did I say? Ninety eight, I believe I said.
Okay, now we're at the equatorial bands. So let's get a little more science. Every little bit helps. Okay. Um, now we'll see if we get anything else from Space High. And I'm just going to go ahead and save. Alright, let's see if we get anything other than equatorial bands. Probably not. Okay, now, now we're close enough that it is actually giving us encounter information in the AN and DN. All right, look at that. Boom, finally. We're getting, we're, we're definitely getting a low IO flyby. So that is as literally as low as we could possibly get. 31 kilometers above the surface of Io. All right, that is a great victory. So it looks like the issue is that I had to be a little bit closer into the system than I was at the start. If I just warped in a little bit further, apparently that would have been enough after all that effort. Well, at least now we finally know what's going on. Um, and I think on that, that happy note of finding out, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to push the actual flyby of Jupiter and Io out to the next episode because it's getting really late here. So thank you everyone for watching. I'm sorry that it got somewhat tedious at the end, um, but man, that's, that's pretty awesome. We actually, we, both of our, both of our Jupiter probes are going to have Galilean moon flybys. Um, may probably should not have wasted that bio sample. Um, should have used instead of Jupiter High, we should have gotten um, we should have used it at Jupiter Low and Io High and Low. Or, sorry, uh, Jupiter Low and Io Low, or just Io High and Low, and let the other one take a Jupiter and the Callisto High. Although we, we also have the same issue there, going with the Callisto, where we want to get as close as we can to the surface. So we actually should have brought more biosamples. But, at any rate, I'm going to go ahead and save this, 6207.10. And I am going to thank you all for watching. Uh, it was kind of tedious towards the end, I apologize, but the reward was worth it. Uh, and I hope that all that fine-tuning was helpful and you learned something from it, and I hope to see you again next time. Bye-bye. Okay. How does this look? That looks quite perfectly lined up to me. All right, so that was a successful plane change. Um, and the question is, can we get, can we? Yeah, we'll have to, I guess we'll have to wait until we're in the SOI so that things don't get funny. Now, maybe patched conic, increasing patched conic limits would help, but I, I think, I think it's some kind of KSP weirdness. So let's go ahead and, that's in 26 days, and we already decided that we don't actually have to do anything yet. 
So, right, let's let's transit this SOI. I'm going to save the game. Oops. Jupiter. Uh, okay. And warpity warpity warp. We're going to warp on through. Okay, we are now in Jupiter's sphere of influence, and we're already doing 12 kilometers per second, despite being way out there. I don't even want to think about how fast we'll be going at periapsis. So. We're targeting Io. Why won't it give me... A and N D N for I O. I guess that's supposed. To, uh, that's the A N, but it doesn't give me a actual number. Relative inclination. Europa, Ganymede, Callisto. Literally none of that tells me anything. Yep, so there's Io. So I was actually right in my predictions. Of where Io will be. And if we can just get this thing... Also, it's not showing the AN and DN nodes, which is worrying. <laughs> which is frankly rather worrying. Okay, we focused on Jupiter. Io is targeted. Unset target. Set target. So we want to create change periapsis to one four kilometers in five minutes. This is just so we get a maneuver node here. And Memory served, Io was about here, wasn't it? I think so. Um, yeah, the advantage of if we are essentially um, in the plane of these moons, so we're hitting them all once, twice, minor adjustments will be enough for us to get these encounters. So. Where is the maneuver node? Ah, it's down here. Whoa, that was weird. It didn't show up, the, the crosshairs didn't show up for a minute, and now they're showing up. That was super weird. All right. We will adjust on out. How are we doing on propellant loading? We're merely sipping. Io is by far the easiest to get an encounter with. Because its period is so short that we can carefully optimize how we're going to come in. And then... We will line up. Alright, so we want to actually go up a little bit more. Would 
we say 88 this time? No, 89. I think we'll go with 89. Oops, 89. All right, now let's fix our AN and DN such that they actually match. Focus on Jupiter. All right, so the... All right, 88.4, we'll, we'll roll that, and looks like the, <sighs> that's correct. It's still not giving us an encounter, which means we're probably still not hitting its sphere of influence. Yep, we're still going to pass behind it. And... Wow, look at how close we are, and we're not actually getting an encounter. That's quite remarkable. So, like, how far away? Oh, it won't tell us how far away it is. But, yeah, I mean, that's that's probably only, like, maybe five or 6,000 kilometers from Io. That's ridiculous, and we're still not in its sphere of influence. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um. Okay. So I guess we'll try an even 90 this time. And align the... Oops. That was too... The other question is, what does that do to... Alright, so then we leave at a very... <laughs> we leave quite southerly. Um, so, is it worth doing that to trade? Whether we can hit anybody coming in, or do we want to try to hit something going out? Um, hmm. I feel like we can probably do a correction there. What's that sort that thing's orbital speed? Oh, its velocity is ten kilometers per second. So we'll be going. I don't know. We'll be going something like 10 kilometers per second, so who knows how much of an inclination change we could actually make there. Um, but let's actually, right, we can, what am I saying? We can find out how much of an inclination change we could make here. Um, because we want to correct that green ejection vector. And bring it right up in line with everything else. Yeah, something like that. Oops, wrong way. Is that right? That looks about right. How much does that cost? 562 meters per second. That is not something we can expend. That is that is not within the capabilities of this probe. Um, so we would actually have to... So what's going on here? 
we would actually probably need to increase we probably need to do rather more than that early and then do another correction later. So let's try something like that. And then perform a second correction about here when I think it enters the equatorial plane of these things. Um, Oh, that's... no, that was the wrong way. That looks correct to me, broadly speaking. Let's put a note on it to check. Is that right? That's right. All right, let's put a note on one of the inner orbits to check. Is that, that is in fact in the plane. All right, and that is a cheap maneuver of merely four meters per second. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna say the heck with our entrance. Um, so, Yeah, likely we just won't get any actual... <sighs> likely we just won't get any... Um... We won't get any encounters with this one, which is acceptable, you know? I'm not unwilling to accept that result, to be clear. Because we do at least have one encounter with the other thing. lined up so let's go ahead and warp to next maneuver when we'll perform this okay focused on Jupiter should be about a th five or six second maneuver. That's why I had those planes aligned, so that we had the maximum chance of that happening. Alright, so here's Dove 3. And we are... Let's see. Let's focus on Jupiter again. On Io. Why is Io targeted? Let's target Jupiter. Ah, uh, so we're coming in from there. How aligned is that with the, these orbits? It's not unaligned. It's not perfectly aligned, but it will do. Um, so we're going to try a little, because now I'm getting cocky. I'm getting a little bit cocky. I want to try to align it better, and we'll see what happens here. That's too high, I think. No, that's actually about right. How high above... Whoops. How high 
above Europa's orbit is that going to be? Uh... So we want to move this back out. I think we want to move this down a little bit. And now we want to create a maneuver node on it. That maneuver node has now disappeared, which is funky. <laughs> okay. Let's remove all nodes and try again. Create a node here. 24 hours. Move it back. All right. Now, raise that up. Needs to raise a little bit more. Too bad there. All right, now let's create a node on it. And let's guesstimate what its period is so short that we can carefully optimize how we're going to come in. And then. We will line up. All right, so we want to actually go up a little bit more. What did we say, 88 this time? No, 89. I think we'll go with 89. Oops, 89. All right, now let's fix our A and D N such that they actually match. Focus on Jupiter. All right. So the All right. 88.4. We'll we'll roll that and looks like the That's correct. It's still not giving us an encounter, which means we're probably still not hitting its sphere of influence. Yep, we're still going to pass behind it. And... Wow. Look at how close we are. And we're not actually getting an encounter. That's quite remarkable. So, like, how far away? Oh, it won't tell us how far away it is. But, yeah, I mean, that's that's probably only, like, maybe five or 6,000 kilometers from Io. That's ridiculous. And we're still not in its sphere of influence. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um Okay. So, I guess we'll try an even 90 this time. And align the Oops. That was too far off radial. Four and three quarters. So it will be... That's a half. So it's going to be right here when we fly by. So that... <sighs> yeah, we, we're almost going to make it to Io. 
and if this were real life we could get some fairly decent photography of Io as we fly by but as this is KSP we are not going to enter Io's sphere of influence and therefore you know we're not actually going to gain anything from that proximity uh, but let's see if there's anything we can do that might get us close so we want to increase time to periapsis so let's go ahead and no that's we don't want to do that let's try radial yes this might actually work why won't it actually give me closest approach markers for IO we are going to be approaching IO fairly closely are not we not assuming my math is correct erg is this above or below Io's orbit? Lost it. Apparently you, you, there's still a bug where you can't actually move maneuver nodes at times. All right, so we are moving radial outwards. All right, so what to do? Well, That's incredibly annoying. It's not giving us the close approach things no matter what we're doing. And I'm fairly sure that that's aligned with the plane. Yes, it is. It's... Focused on IO. Okay, now we're aligned. So we need to burn about like this, I think. There we go. It had kind of stopped moving for a minute. Okay, and lastly, we want to move this down a little bit. Okay. Now let's see where we are. We had 90.54. Apologies for the flicker. Okay, so that... Looks like now we're a bit in front, so let's try something like 88. Yeah, we passed... bit in front and our inclination was 
Okay, so we're going to line up such that we can change our inclination. Okay, so we were going to try about 85, I think, and we wanted 155.335. Oops. Jupiter. Uh, okay. And warpity warpity warp. We're going to warp on through. Okay, we are now in Jupiter's sphere of influence, and we're already doing 12 kilometers per second, despite being way out there. I don't even want to think about how fast we'll be going at periapsis. So. We're targeting Io. Why won't it give me... A and then DN for IO. I guess that's supposed to, oh, that's the AN, but it doesn't give me a actual number. Relative inclination. Europa Ganymede Callisto. Literally none of that tells me anything more than what we already knew. So that's tragic. Um, we're unlikely to hit anybody coming in because we're quite low. So we don't actually have to... The only other thing we could... Well, what if we... Let's do something funky here. Let's... That does nothing. That also does a fat lot of nothing, it looks like. Yeah, we can change our, our peerage of, but it isn't actually giving us any kind of encounter. So yeah, as I said back at the start of this whole rigmarole, it would be great if you could just force KSP to tell you where a body is going to be at a given point in time. For example, we're we're already falling by close up. Let's try getting me. So we're going to be uh, remove all nodes. We're going to be at its altitude in 44 days and 50 minutes. Um. Well, I guess there's no just has a remarkably tiny sphere of, oh right of course it has a tiny sphere of influence because Jupiter's right there and Jupiter has the mass of gravity well and we're doing 27.3 kilometers per second all right so we want to be even further forward I think 89 that's a that's a really impressively tiny sphere of influence. We certainly did not luck out as to which one of these things we were getting an encounter with. But then Io is by far the easiest to get an encounter with. Because its period is so short that we can carefully optimize how we're going to come in. And then... We will line up. All right, so we want to actually go up a little bit more. What did we say, 88 this time? No, 89. I think we'll go with 89. Oops, 89. All right, now let's fix our A and D N such that they actually match... Focus on Jupiter. All right. So the uh, 
All right. 88.4. We'll we'll roll that and looks like the <sighs> That's correct. It's still not giving us an encounter, which means we're probably still not hitting its sphere of influence. Yep, we're still going to pass behind it. And Wow, look at how close we are, and we're not actually getting an encounter. That's quite remarkable. So, like, how far away? Oh, it won't tell us how far away it is. But, yeah, I mean, that's that's probably only, like, maybe five or 6,000 kilometers from Io. That's ridiculous, and we're still not in its sphere of influence. <laughs> wow. Target Europa, 43.25 over 3.55. So it will be 12.18 orbital periods. So 0.18 times 360 is 60 degrees. So it will be... here. It will be here when we're here, so we'll miss it. Now let's check the other option. 43 days and 19 hours, which is uh, 3 quarters, a little over 3 quarters, 0.78 over 3.551. 12.32. Alright, so it will be here when we're here. We're still going to miss it. All right, so I think that... Um, our last gasp is Io. We're going to hit Io 43 days, 43 point... What is that? 3.6, roughly? What is 9 hours over 24? 3.75. 43.375 over its orbital period is 1.77 days. Twenty-four and a half rotations. So it will be here when we're there. And when we're over here. Twenty-four and three quarters. So it will be. That's a half. So it's going to be right here when we fly by. So that. Yeah, we we're almost going to make it to Io. And if this were real life, we could get some fairly decent photography of Io as we fly by. But as this is KSP. We are not going to enter Io's sphere of influence, and therefore, you know, we're not actually going to gain anything from that proximity. Uh, but let's see if there's anything we can do that might get us close. So we want to increase time to periapsis. So let's go ahead and... All right, 88.4, we'll, we'll roll that, and looks like the, <sighs> that's correct. It's still not giving us an encounter, which means we're probably still not hitting its sphere of influence. Yep, we're still gonna pass behind it. And, Wow. 
Wow, look at how close we are, and we're not actually getting an encounter. That's quite remarkable. So, like, how far away? Oh, it won't tell us how far away it is. But yeah, I mean, that's... That's probably only, like, maybe five or 6,000 kilometers from Io. That's ridiculous. And we're still not in its sphere of influence. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um... So I guess we'll try an even 90 this time. And align the... Oops. That was too far off radial. Now we need to Okay, now we're at the equatorial bands. So let's get a little more science. Every little bit helps. Okay. Um, now we'll see if we get anything else from Space High. And I'm just going to go ahead and save. Alright, let's see if we get anything other than equatorial bands. Probably not. Okay, now, now we're close enough that it is actually giving us encounter information in the AN and DN. All right. Look at that. Boom, finally. We're getting, we're, we're definitely getting a low IO flyby. So that is as literally as low as we could possibly get. 31 kilometers above the surface of Io. All right, that is a great victory. So it looks like the issue is that I had to be a little bit closer into the system than I was at the start. If I just warped in a little bit further, apparently that would have been enough after all that effort. Well, at least now we finally know what's going on. Um, and I think on that, that happy note of finding out, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to push the actual flyby of Jupiter and Io out to the next episode because it's getting really late here. So thank you everyone for watching. I'm sorry that it got somewhat tedious at the end, um, but man, that's, that's pretty awesome. We actually, we, both of our, both of our Jupiter probes are going to have Galilean moon flybys. Um, may probably should not have wasted that bio sample. Um, should have used instead of Jupiter high, we should have gotten um, uh, 
we should have used it at Jupiter low and Io high and low. Or, sorry, uh, Jupiter low and Io low, or just Io 